smartphones can do all these fascinating things, yet admittedly mostly useless, but it sparked my imagination. What if I could bring them to the real world? Like walking down the street with laser eyes, or skipping the line as Ryan Gosling. So after a bit of thinking and a couple of prototypes, I decided that the best and still cool looking way forward would be to put this, this, and this into some sort of a helmet device. And this, and this, and this, and all of this. By the way, I also made a complete crowdfunding campaign for it, including a professionally made promo video. I let the link below and at the end of this video. Still can't believe it failed. Couldn't have been the price, could it? So let's take a look at what my ultimate goal was. I wanted what's on my phone to appear in front of my face in real time. And that immediately presented me with a few challenges. So your phone needs a certain minimum distance from your face in order to understand your facial expressions. And for the projector goes, the further away from the projection, the bigger the image. So mounting it here would result in a teeny tiny image. Now you may be wondering, why did you not use a screen instead of dealing with the typical shortcomings of a projection? I thought about it initially, but then I came to the conclusion that any design with a flat screen would look a bit dull. And maybe now is the time to mention that originally I just wanted to make a costume for a party with the theme Utopia. And I definitely wanted my design to be a bit more dreamy and advanced rather than purely functional. And this is exactly when this project got out of hand. What do you mean? But back to the drawing. The most straightforward housing for a proper result would have to look something like this. Don't know about you, but this looks more dystopian than utopian to me. So after checking out the local craft supply store for something that would serve me as an outer shell and a few experiments with my first full-scale prototype and a very patient girlfriend. It's okay, honey. I love doing things like this. I decided that something like this should give me the best results. The phone in the neck area of the device can see my face from working distance via two mirrors. And I managed to create enough distance for the projection to grow a decent size by placing the projector in the back of the head and adding two more mirrors to guide the projection around the head onto the screen in front. So finally I got to work. Hello. Two more challenges worth mentioning. Because of this mirror right in front of your face, it's practically impossible to interact with others, let alone navigate in space. All you can see is your own sad face from up close. It's pretty hard to translate what it feels like to be inside the mask in a video, but let me give it a try. Note, this is a good friend of mine who used to be the face of my former startup. He told me that he's real sad that we stopped making these type of videos with him in it, so let's grant him this brief reappearance. Oh, that's too kind. You're welcome. Okay, let's give this a shot. It's actually quite irritating to be isolated with just yourself in such a confined space. And putting it on for the first time can be quite an experience. I feel like I'm in space. But I guess just that alone was worth building the thing. Also, if you wonder why I installed this whining fan, once I wrapped the shell around the frame and everything was sealed tight, I noticed that the mirror in front would fog up. And what would any reasonable engineer do in a situation like that? Exactly, throw more technology onto the problem. But back to the original issue, the fact that I was completely blind in there. The, in this case, exceptionally low-tech solution I chose was yet another mirror to create a type of periscope, much like they use on submarines. I made a fancy 3D visualization of this in the crowdfunding campaign video. I'll add a link below or at the end of this video. So this seemed like a flawless idea, but at this point in the building process, I had a revelation. You see, originally I thought of my device as a pure Animoji mask. But what's stopping me from going to the Instagram camera and applying AR filters to my face in real time? But in order to make that work, I had to make some changes. My original mirror setup was too narrow. 
And in order to get a wider shot of the face into the phone, I needed to switch to a curved mirror. But that meant that my already narrow field of view in the periscope would get even smaller and distorted. I decided it's good enough. Boom. Another challenge was the fact that this well-sealed bubble wouldn't allow sound to travel in and out easily. In other words, you couldn't hear sh and people on the outside couldn't hear you either. What? Help! Because I focused more on the impression of the device on the people on the outside, I decided to install a microphone connected to a voice changer, connected to a speaker facing outwards, but no hearing aid whatsoever facing inwards. Say something! That's the main reason why you can hear me yell a lot at the actors in the making of of the crowdfunding campaign video. Just try to act better! By now, the mask, including all the frame, housing, projector, batteries, cables, etc., comes in at around 3.7 kilograms. That's roughly as much as a small watermelon. But because it sits on your shoulders, that's not too bad. And I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. For more mask action, take a look at the campaign video. I'll have the link at the end. And let me know in the comments if you want me to make a version 2 that's maybe more compact, wider, wider, and just overall more compatible with everyday use. And also if you have ideas on how to do that. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh...